Hello there everybody, Dingo Crush here, and today we will be facing the first, uh, I mean not the first boss, but today we will be facing the boss. And we just demolished the enemies out of the way, and we're gonna jump right over here, and this is gonna take us to the boss fight. A deadly dance. I could feel that Koopa vibe coming. Most distastefully, bad juju. Yeah, well, you give me the creeps too, lady. Cooking up an army of ghosts isn't a very neighborly pastime. <laughs> oh, Sly. I see your mouth a moving, but all I hear is blah, blah, blah. Well. If jaws need to flap, then let them flap! See you in the next world, Slack Hoopa! Yep, and this is actually the... I, I forgot what's her name. I literally did. <laughs> and uh, you'll see soon the reason why I said it's actually very good to get a golden horseshoe. Because this is going to be one hell of a fuck. <laughs> I fucked myself over. This is going to be one hell of a boss fight. I'll tell you that. I think the bosses after that are actually going to get rather easy. And here Come is where here. it begins. You can't run away forever. Quite true. Quite true. Why don't I have my servant Chumley escort you over here? All right. What's the catch? Oh, not much. Just a little game I like to play with all my annoying guests. I want to see how well you pay attention. What do you mean? Well, I'll unleash my mighty <coughs> mojo magic upon you. If you repeat what I do, you'll dodge it just fine. If not, You'll get set! <laughs> A little voodoo Simon says, huh? Sounds easy enough. Yep, so this is gonna be a uh, Guitar Hero kind of uh, game. Uh, which sometimes in some games I actually kind of like this. But it's actually very difficult to actually pay attention to this. Um... It's actually a very interesting boss fight. It is like I don't I don't remember seeing any boss fights like this in most of old video games. And what I never understood <laughs> is why did it make this character sound all ghetto? <laughs> it's something that actually kind of made me laugh <laughs> for some odd reason. <laughs> and this is going to be the second hit on her and it's gonna be a little bit faster um, <clears throat> now if you actually mess up the patterns um, of this if you're missing the patterns of this you are most likely going to be fucked so that's why I said to get a horseshoe because that's actually gonna help you out um, because you'd actually won't you won't need to actually restart the stage and i'm actually struggling to actually talk at the same time <laughs> while playing this stage because most of you know um uh, my let's plays i record them live you know and it's actually very difficult to concentrate on certain things whenever um you know you have to do uh you have to pay attention very carefully to the boss fight like this. And we're gonna be on the last hit <coughs> on this boss. Now this is gonna be a whole lot faster, I'm telling you right now. <laughs> I'm actually, this is the point where... <laughs> Holy shit. But I love that how it like Sly actually. <laughs> he, he, oh god, I I got lost. I just lost my. Oh shit! Woo! I lost one horseshoe, 
but hopefully this is gonna be the only one. I'm scared. <laughs> Yes, and we've hit her. And we lost another horseshoe. You certainly got some rhythm, raccoon. But it won't help you none if you're fixing to go after the Panda King. He's tough, with a capital T. If you go poking around his stronghold in China, you're likely to get poked back. Yeah, well, if he's anything like the rest of you, I think I'll manage. Ms. Ruby's section of the Thievius Raccoonus held notes for my pioneering ancestor, Slight in Common. His invisibility technique allowed him to steal from corrupt pharaohs and greedy noblemen. Right on schedule, Inspector Fox's arrival cued my exit. The production of zombies, made illegal in the World Peace Accord of 71, earned Ms. Ruby a life sentence behind bars. While the gang and I enjoyed a few weeks in the tropical sunshine, working on our tans in preparation for our next caper. All right, so we're pretty much done with that area. <clears throat> Travel plans to China have all been worked out. Yep, and um, well, we'll enter this area right now. The road trip gave me the time I needed to study up on the Panda King. Born penniless, he was fascinated by the fireworks rich noblemen set off every New Year's. He spent a decade learning the art. But when he tried to offer his fireworks to the noblemen, they couldn't see past his shabby clothes and chased him away. Humiliated, the Panda King took revenge on those who shunned him by using the very tools of his art for crime. The Fetish Five recruited him as their demolitions expert, and from then on, his explosive touch became feared worldwide. He's rumored to be perfecting some new firework technique high in the unstable Kunlun Mountains of western China. Yep, so in the next part we're gonna start the next area, um, in which that's actually gonna be very interesting, and also there is uh, there is something that I would like to talk to you guys about in the next part, but that's pretty much it for this part, so thanks for watching guys, don't forget to drop a comment and a like and subscribe if you haven't, and we shall see you in the next part of Sly Cooper, so goodbye.